to tell you a story time what is wrong with my forehead <laughs> and this story time is going to be my uber life and this story time is about the lady who paid over $200 to ride in my car <laughs> okay so this trip was um, was a return trip, so it was a round trip. So, the trip took about an hour and so many minutes to get there. So, I picked up, the, I got the request, I picked up the lady, and uh, first of all, she had me at a wrong address, but I was on the street, but she was just further up. So, I um, picked her up, and this was the weekend, well, there were two weekends in a row with Coachella. I don't know if you heard of that. And she rented a, a house in La, La Quinta. Yeah, La Quinta. And it's like out uh, near Coachella, California. So, um, on the way there, I, I um, listen to her she was on the phone and then she got off the phone well because she kept trying to call someone and they wouldn't answer the phone so on the way there she was telling me about oh I rented a house for the Coachella and how the friends and everything were uh, acting up and drunk and I guess high and sending people lawn cheers um, in the neighborhood or where, whatever, because I've never been, so I don't know how it is, but it's just a big event where there's a lot of um, music artists and bands and, you know, big giant concert for the weekend. So, like I said, she rented a house for the weekend and she rented a, an extra day for her and her boyfriend but her and her boyfriend had got into an argument. It was Sunday night because I picked her up on Monday. They got into an argument, so she came all the way home, which was in Riverside. So she needed to get back out there because the girl that's still in the house, it was supposed to be her and her boyfriend, the other girl. Um, she wasn't answering the phone and she, and her her boyfriend he called and she, he had left the house too and she was pissed off because he left the house knowing that they left a plate of coke and i ain't talking coca-cola out on the table yeah i said it coke in a plate on the table so she kept calling the girl she wouldn't answer the phone she kept calling her like almost all the way out there which the ride was more than an hour so um, on the ride there it's like I had already been ubering earlier so now I have to go to the bathroom so I, I told her when we get there may I come in and use the bathroom and she said Oh, no problem just let me go in first to see uh, the, what the situation is because now she's thinking the girl is overdose she ain't waking up or no one is there and nobody's answering the phone so she got there and she went in and then she came back out and she got me after about 10 minutes so I'm leaving the clock running and everything because I don't know how long this ride is going to be. Well, actually, 
I didn't know at the time that she wanted me to take her back home. So I just left it running because right now um, my trip is not done yet because I'm going to go to the bathroom first. Then when I get ready to go, I'm going to end your trip. So I um, go in and she told me, come on in. I go in and this little skinny broad <laughs> was like, she hadn't ate in a year. <laughs> I'm just saying, she's like real skinny. And anyway, she's, um, I just seen her when I was coming in and I said, hello, whatever. I went to the bathroom and when I was coming back out, um, she had all the suitcase thrown by the door. She's dumping everything. She's dumping her boyfriend's stuff. Um, this is the lady who was left in the house that was sleeping, didn't answer the phone. She's dumping all the stuff out. She can't find the key. She even lost the key to the place that they rented. Anyway, I'm going to end it right there because I don't know what happened to the key and how they resolved it, but she lost the key. So, I go back out to the car and I'm just like looking at the neighborhood. I'm very nice place they rent it. And so, um, I sat there for about, well, at the time she came and she asked me, can I take her back home? You know, once she get her out, she's got to try to get her out of the house. So then I came in to go to the bathroom for a second time. And, and then I just stayed in there because it was nice and cool. And I don't know how I was uh, offered or was asked to clean out the, the, the refrigerator. I can't remember that part. But I went in the, the kitchen and I cleaned out the refrigerator. And the lady said, oh, the one I brought there, she said, oh, you want a drink? Um, she took the can opener and popped up, open a drink. And I'm thinking, oh, this is apple juice. I went like this. I'm like, oh, no, this is alcohol. I can't have it. I can't have it. I don't want to drink. Even if I did drink, I shouldn't be drinking now. I got to take you all the way back home. So, uh, get the top back on. And just to be... Um, Thankful that she gave it to me. I just set it inside the car. But anyway, I cleaned out the refrigerator and the little skinny girl, she's still digging for the keys and dumped out everything out the room. The lady that I brought there was trying to dump the Coke in the toilet. She was saying, no, 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 I'll take it, I'll take it. Not only did they have Coke, but they had like a, a gallon bag of mushrooms and it was filled tight. It was about like this big. But anyway. But she was more concerned about the coke because it was left open on the table. So she was trying to dump it and the girl's like, no, 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 I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take it. I mean, it was it was quite a bit. I don't know the value, but it was quite a bit on that plate. It was not just a couple of lines, it was a pile and it was quite a bit on there. So they had themselves a good time. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, I was cleaning out the refrigerator and Every time I would take out containers that have food in it, I took all the drinks out and everything, but the cans, um, the containers with food in it, I was saying, this, did you want this, you want this? The little skinny girl was saying, don't throw it away, don't throw it away, I'll take it, I'll take it. I'm like, really? You'll take it. This is like, been there for like two days, and you'll take it. But anyway, and the other lady was saying, no, throw in the trash, throw in the trash. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you serious? So, um, after I cleaned out the, the kitchen, and I think I went to sit in the car because um, the little skinny girl was making me nervous because she was frustrated looking for the key. So, I went and sat back in the car because um, it was, I think it was like in April, so it was still really nice. It wasn't that hot. So I sat out there and I waited for her and she came out a few times to see if I was okay. And um, anyway, I was like, whatever, take your time because the clock is still running. I'll sit here and get 15 cents per minute, whatever. And then I get my 95 cents per mile going back. I'm not complaining. So um, we left out 
finally we left out, but she had to leave the girl there because she didn't know where her boyfriend went. So she, um, we left her there. So when we pulled out, we had to show ID and, and to get into it's a gated community. And so we showed, uh, she talked to the man on the way out and then she called on the way home um, to make sure that so-and-so with the license plates this and kind of car, don't let them back in once they get out. So, so um, um, I had to stop to get gas to go back. I'm so sorry. I stopped to go get gas to get back home. I'm, and the lady wanted to tip me. All she had was a hundred dollar bill. She said, "Oh, you know how to trade for a hundred? I don't carry no money when I Uber. Mm -mm, no, no way." So I told her no. So I, I had, I couldn't get get a get a tip. Anyway, she was smoking her cigarette, and, and um, a lot of time on the way home, she was talking to somebody, and she was crying and stuff. And I was like. This woman is going to have a mental breakdown and it was the whole ride was kind of stressful because she was upset and breaking down and crying and and um, I got her home and and she was like thank you and everything and when I seen that she was going to be paying over $200 for the ride it's like but let me tell you this she actually was trying to get a limousine to take her up there and i didn't understand why you need a limousine to take you back up there it's like who are you trying to be or who are you because i got people in my car i have no idea who they are and the, the stories they tell me i'm like thinking when i drop them off at these homes up in the hill i'm like i wonder who is that but anyway that is my story time that I pre-recorded because I didn't have internet because I'm on another job. So if I can say I love you, you can definitely love yourself. Bye.